We're right in the middle of beating Texas Tech and playing Texas on ABC. That's just the, like the, you couldn't ask for a bigger week. How about that Texas Tech game? BYU wins 27 to 14. The defense forces five turnovers. Defense and special teams, five turnovers, which was the key to the game, which seems to be the key to every game. Yeah, and, and how about Eddie Haggard in this game? You know, mm-hmm. he came on with us post game and he was not only the player of the game defensively in our books, but he was a player of the week on defense for the Big 12 conference. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, he, he was phenomenal. He had an interception. He had a fumble recovery for a touchdown. Um, he had four tackles. He had or, he was he was phenomenal out there in this game, and he was leading, and he was making calls, and and uh, he's a Big 12 defense he's a player of the week. He, uh, I sit down with him this week on game day. Right. And you get to know Eddie a little bit. He's a, he's a leader. He wants to go to the NFL, and the scouts said you need one more year at Power 5 football level. And Jay Hill says, I got the spot for you. And here yep. he is. He's yeah. fantastic. And, and, and I love, because the, there was speculation that he could go maybe the free agent ra- round or be a really, really late draft pick because yeah. he had kind of enough out there to get a shot. And Jay said, you know what? Come play in P5. I know what you can do at this level and get drafted. And, you know, if he has the second half of the season, you know, a little step up from the first half of the season – He's moving his way up in people's in, in people's draft boards oh, yeah. and, and consideration because he's having a heck of a season. Big test for him yeah. this weekend. And how about how about those safeties, Dave? Yeah. You know, we, we've been talking about depth at safety, and and Kalani's been talking about depth. Period. Right. Um, and they started off the season before they played a single game, and they lost both starters. So they lost Talon Alfrey and they lost Micah Harper, and it's like, oh my goodness, what what are they going to do? Um, it, but but the guys have just rallied and and they they who is going to be the other guy um that could step up and play some some free safety opposite opposite slate because they knew slade was a proven commodity he had been really you know, he got some playing time spring ball he was really good they're like okay slade can play who's going to be the other guy how about crew wakely having 11 tackles in the game last week fantastic and he was all over the place. And he was in the right places, taking the right angles. I hate to say it, but we've kind of taken for granted that Ethan Slade's going to be in the right spot and play mm-hmm. well. All of a sudden, Ethan Slade's a given. Now, Talon Offrey could play this week. We haven't gotten word yet. Hasn't played yet. So, so depth is going to get better. Micah Harper's out for the year. But now take Talon Offrey and put him back in the mix with as well as Ethan Slade's playing and as well as Crew Wakely's playing. I like that. Um, you got Damuni, who is a young buck that's really coming up and playing extremely well and physically maybe the most gifted of all the safeties. Um, and he's coming on. And all of a sudden, that safety group is looking like a strength. Yeah. For this team. We were very worried four weeks ago about this this group of safeties, and I'm not that worried about them anymore. Larry's in from Linden, Utah, and I see Michael's in from Beaumont, Texas. Hey, guys. The offense, no turnovers. Keaton Slovis, 15 of 27, 127 yards, two touchdowns. Darius Lassiter, your selection for the Y factor, mm-hmm. four for 47, a one-handed catch, oh, which was awesome. Oh, that catch was, we broke it down in AFR. Yeah, you that thing watch that was AFR. ridiculous. And then we went split screen his touchdown with Chase Roberts, one-hander, and then we debated which one was best. You can see that on yeah, AFR. Hey, on the chat, that's another question I'm interested in on the chat. Like, so, so I'm not going to tell you what Dave Nixon and I and, and, and Dave McCann said on AFR today, but which catch do you think was better, the Chase Roberts catch or the Darius Lassiter catch? Which one was better um, between those two? We did a side-by-side on the show and yeah. showed them at the same time on a split screen. Um but take all things into consideration. I'm interested to know which catch you thought was better between the. They were both phenomenal. Yeah. They're both phenomenal. They're waiting for you. Ryan Rico, eight punts, 45.5 yard average, hit a long of a 70 yarder, and he recovered a fumble. Special teams, Will Farron, two for two, field goals of 35 and 41 yards. Special teams was outstanding. That's what it takes. Hey, w- Will Farron, we don't even talk about him. Do you know how nice that is? When we don't even talk about the kicker. Because all that he means does, he's kicking good, right? All he does is kick the ball off nine yards deep in the end zone, so the teams hardly ever have a return, and we just expect him to make every field goal. He's been so unbelievably reliable that we stopped talking about the kicker. Could there be a better scenario than that when you don't even talk about the kicker because he's just so automatic right now? And I hate to even say that. That's why I'm knocking on wood. Every source of wood that I can find, I'm knocking <laughs> on right now because I, I don't, I don't want to jinx him. 
But Will Farron's been a revelation. Like, he has been a great get for BYU, the transfer from Boise State. And right now, BYU's special teams, their kicking game has been phenomenal. It's been great, a great relief for the head coach. Kalani Sataki had this to say as he wrapped up Texas Tech and kicked off Texas Week. This was yesterday, Monday, uh, to the media, setting the tone for the week. Uh, let's hear him, Kalani Sataki. Uh, yeah, um, excited for another week of football. We're, we're uh, obviously uh, coming off of a win last weekend. It was really good for us and uh, homecoming game. So now we're... Um, Back into the uh, the schedule, heading out to Texas. I'm um, going out to Austin to play a uh, really, really good team, um, one of the best teams in the country. So uh, well coached and then coached by my buddy Sark, you know. So I think um, looking at them and seeing them on film, uh, we've been able to watch them play uh, throughout the year. But uh, tough, tough, uh, tough task for us. But uh, we should be um, working on an opportunity for us to play at our best this weekend, but watching watching them, there's not a lot of um, not a lot of weaknesses, and um, I think the, the goal is for us to focus on what we can get done, and then get out there and give it our best shot and see what happens. If we can live with the results if we do that. Uh, still feel like we can play better ball. Um, uh, I felt like we've had moments in the game uh, against Texas Tech where we felt like um, this is what we we're used to, maybe forming our identity off of that in all three phases, but. Um, also, it wasn't an error-free game, so still some things to work on, some things to improve on. I said this uh, post-game last week on, on, on Saturday night that uh, there's still room for improvement. But the, uh, the thing that I am really thankful for is that we um, play with high effort, high energy. Um, a lot of that came from the fans, and we're going on the road now, so we're going to have to generate that ourselves and uh, try, to, try to do something that a lot, a lot of teams can't do, and that goes into a very hostile environment with with a fantastic fan base. Then uh, they have a, a really great team that that's you see it on film all in all all the positions, all three phases. Well coached team. I, I know their coaching staff. A lot of guys on the on their staff. They do an amazing job. And so, and then you know Sark's been been so good to me uh, throughout our coaching careers. He's always been uh, a guy that I can always turn to. We, we keep in touch quite often. Obviously, not going to be keeping in touch right now as, as we're opponents, but. Um, Appreciate his friendship and uh, the fact that he he isn't a, a a cougar. You know, he played here, and so it was, it's nice that we were able to keep that friendship. But he's a, it's something that he does that I <clears throat> that I, I really appreciate him keeping in touch with me, and especially when he his his uh, his career took off and had this great trajectory uh, a lot faster than mine did. But he always uh, were, were able to be you know. Uh, Kind enough to give me some a lot of his time and, and be able to talk talk ball and uh, so it's been really cool. I'm looking forward to seeing him and getting on the field and seeing these teams compete against each other and, and really really hopeful that this is going to be an opportunity for our team to perform at our best and that uh, we can generate some momentum from last week but going into this game and uh, you know try to find ways to to make this a huge positive for us in, in the long run. I think the, the the prep will be good great for us this week. Had a great week of prep last week and looking forward to keep building and trying to get to that position where we can hit our peak and, and uh, uh, keep getting better as a team. We saw some flashes of it in, 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 in the game against Tech, but I think this is something we're going to have to be a little bit more consistent and, and not be uh, just flashes. We have to keep that and sustain it throughout the game and looking forward to getting that done. Kalani Sataki. He had a lot of good things to say about Sark, as you heard. Sark had a lot of good things to say about uh, Kalani, as you can imagine, and uh, it's going to be interesting. They're, they're playing for different things. Texas is trying to get in the college football playoff. BYU is trying to get bowl eligible in their first year as a, right. as a P5. And so each team takes the field uh, motivated by the opportunity to, to get some goals met. And it's interesting. When you watch Texas, I've been watching some film of Texas this week to get ready for our broadcast on Saturday, and um, I just go, whoa. That dude is, hey, watch number one. You know, I'm talking about the, their, their wide receiver, um, Xavier Worthy. And I'm like, wow, this dude is special. And then the next play, I'm like, oh, my goodness. Watch Jonathan Brooks, the running back. This guy is amazing. Like, he's something special. And over and over yeah, and over again, yeah. you, on defense, the, the Jalen Ford is a big-time NFL linebacker um, that's, that, that mans the middle for them. They have so much talent. But you know what they're coming into without? 
quarterback. Their starting quarterback. And that's big. And that's huge for yeah. BYU. That's a huge opening for BYU. Their backup quarterback, yep, he's a five-star guy. In fact, the backup's backup was the number one overall recruit in the country last year in Arch Manning. And Arch may play some this week. Familiar name, right? Right. Um, and so they have talent, but, but I don't care how talented you are. Steve Young is one of the greatest quarterbacks in the history of the game of football, period. Oh, by the way, did we mention he's been on our show? But but that's yes, that was like that was like a little parenthesis. But but one of the greatest <laughs> in the history of the game. But Steve wasn't so great when he was brand new out there playing as a sophomore. No, no. Right? I was in the crowd. The crowd was groaning. There's like, who's this lefty? Yeah. This is what we got. Ty Detmer won the Heisman Trophy, one of the greatest college football quarterbacks ever. Yeah, I remember his first game as a freshman. Yeah. And all the picks. Now, new, so, newbies seem to do well against us, um, but not on Saturday against Texas Tech. Right. We got after that newbie. The, the TCU newbie, that was a whole bunch of stuff. A perfect storm. He looked great. Uh, so we got another newbie well, on and Saturday. Mur- and Murf- Murphy's the starter this week, um, yeah. and he's a freshman. His career stats are four of eight, right? So he doesn't have any touchdowns. That's four Do- of eight attempts. Doesn't have any interceptions, right? Yeah. He, he reminds me a little bit of Jefferson from Arkansas in terms Big, of his physical six stature. 6'5", five. Five, almost 240 pounds. Um, he wants to throw the ball around. Sark doesn't ask his quarterback to go out and run around. Um, so it's, it's an opportunity for BYU. They created a lot of distractions and disruption for the young quarterback last week at Texas Tech. And that's what the, this is an opening. So as talented as Texas is, they're starting a freshman quarterback on Saturday. We're going to talk a lot about Texas. Yep. Hans is going to join us here in a few minutes. Before he does, let's oh, get to yeah, this. Oh, yeah, let's do this. So uh, so some time ago, I had this idea. Uh, there should be a BYU football alphabet book for kids and adults and mm-hmm. every church bag, every office, and every home. And of the 500,000 BYU alum, there's there's certainly a market for that. But there was no book. And so Sherry Du, who's been on this show, yeah. I got Did with her. Did we mention that Sherry's been on the show? We went to work on it. <laughs> Everyone's been on this show. So on Saturday, this shows up on the porch. It doesn't go on sale until November 7th. We're going to put the pre-order it's like fourteen ninety nine. We'll put the pre order info in the chat. But what I thought, you know what? Rather than me just open it the house and check it out, I thought we'd do it here. No, we're gonna do. This is like an unveiling. This is this is a this Have is a total an, unveiling. You've had an advanced copy though, right? This I haven't seen what's in this box, but I've seen uh, prototypes and I've okay. seen. Um, but this is the this is the mother, this is the mother load. So we're gonna take this out, and we're gonna open this thing up. Hey, I need one. Hand one over here. Hand one over here. I'm going right to the, I'm going to F (laughs) right now. See where I stand. So the, uh, I want to see who beat me out. I'm okay with that. (laughs) So I'll just give you a sneak peek and then you can. So we've got like, there's the letter N, there's the letter M. Those are pretty obvious. You got Jim McMahon, you got Gifford Nielsen. Well, and F F is is more obvious than I, I didn't even think about this, but, but, and he's a dear friend. Yeah. And um, so, well, look at so I'm, I'm, who, who would you think, like just in your mind right now, everybody out there, who would you think would be F? And Dave nailed F because it's the Phantom. It's Eldon Forti. Yeah. And, and Eldon Forti, um, when Eldon and his wife, when he was being the Phantom at BYU and, and just this tremendous runner, um, they lived in Wymount Terrace right next to my mom and dad. And, and I was born uh, when my mom and dad were here at school. Um, so I was born in Provo, even though I spent my entire life in New York. I was born in Provo. Um, Darren Fortai was born to the Fortis at that same time. Yeah. So we were we didn't know that we were friends, but we were little kids together. My dad and Eldon are dear friends. Nice. We've been friends. And then Darren and I played together the next generation at BYU. Darren played wide receiver. How about that? So the Phantom Son. I and turned, to, turned to H without revealing it. Okay. So you had H. You got, well, you got Tom Homo. You got... Taysom Hill, you got Max Hall, you've got uh, Gordon Hudson. Um, yeah, and so, so yeah. there's, there's, there's can H. I, can I show him who H is? No, you have, no, it's just a teaser. Just, but you agree with H? Oh, it, yeah. Remember, it's not a Lifetime Achievement Award book, but it's also a book. It's a fun book, uh, too. With people who have kids. And you know who, what demographic right now are having kids? People who know Taysom Hill. Yes. And, yeah. and, I, and I have to tell you, G, I really agree with. And maybe one of the most underrated players of all time at BYU. Yeah. Yeah, there's so, some. There's some. You know, good people ones. are going to go. What about this? What about that? I know. But, but you know, you, you can't. Like, can I tell them who G is, or do they have to get the book? They got to get the book. Yeah, okay. just tease them. I'm just going to say G <laughs> was on the All Madden team. 
was on the All Madden team and started for more than a decade at middle backer for the Washington Redskins and was a teammate of mine. All right. So that, I'm going to agree with you. Enough. We're not that giving you enough. any more hints. Here's what I like about it. Because you need it's, to order the it's, book. Uh, a kid can handle it. It's, uh, it's a board book. And, oh, um, my roommate made it. And, Man. Uh, I didn't anyway, my roommate made it. Fourteen ninety nine. It's not a Christmas book, but it's available for Christmas. Every kid should get something like that in their stocking at Christmas time. Jay, um, I'll give him a and hand. And then on we Jay. teach the, we train them up while they're young. We teach them the alphabet. And, Jay, uh, Jay is the guy that, so that Ron that. Mc, Ron McBride remembered his name the night before the game, but he didn't remember Brian McKenzie's name, and it really made Brian McKenzie mad. We we had Brian on the show last week. And Brian went out and rushed for 176 yards because Ron McBride remembered who Jay was, but not who. All right. So there it is. There's the physical evidence of the C is for Cougar, BYU football alphabet book.